Hey everybody, uh, it's 2020 and I've got a brand new video to start off and uh, over the Christmas and New Year's break I have been messing around with uh, getting into making 3D objects for 3D printing so you've already seen the last video that we made with the big old Space Marine um, that was a 3D printed project and I have been basically just messing with that for most of my vacation time. I've got a ton of models that I've printed out that are ready for paint, um, various sizes and scales for different painting projects and stuff like that. And I have now gotten into where I want to start making my own stuff. And um, eventually I will start learning software. Uh, I haven't decided on whether or not I want to start with something like Blender or something like uh, ZBrush, that kind of stuff, but I will be learning that shortly. So right now I'm still kind of a basic bitch and I am just doing uh, kit bashing, basically. So this is like a kit bashing video um, or a conversion video, whatever you want to call it, but it all takes place in, in digital space. So I've got the 3D Builder open right now and this is the first um, big like kit bash original model that I have done. Um, I've done some other ones that are like basic space marines and things like that, but this is the first one that's gonna be like original to the point of being like a unique object even though I didn't create any of the files used to um, have our complex shapes. So let me pull that up and we'll get into it. Alright, so here it is. This is a really cool space marine grav bike, jet bike, grav bike, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I used a couple of different, uh, you know, freeware kind of files over on Thingiverse from the uh, myriad of Warhammer type stuff that people put up there. Um, and yeah, so this is just a kit bash. You can see all of the separate parts and pieces over here. This is a really simple, like, 3D builder in uh, Windows 10. And even though you can't really do a whole lot of uh, complex stuff, you can get a lot of stuff done. And most of what this is, is um, chopped, stretched, resized, uh, pre-made pieces from other files, and a lot of simple shapes that I have created in the 3D Builder, and then um, positioned and moved and chopped and sliced those to, you know, fill in the, the blanks, so to speak. So we have this big front end, on the grav bike and you might recognize it because it is actually part of a repulsor tank that has been um, reshaped and a bunch of other simple shapes added to this complex compound shape to do the stuff that we want um, and you can see like, I still have some of these in different colors so like on our handlebars here you can see that this cylinder is in blue and these curves are in yellow that's basically just because i took some simple shapes um chopped and, and reshaped them and put them together to create this really nice s curve uh chopper style handlebar um and then you can see that uh like the structure of the bike is just some simple shapes to uh fill it out with body. There's these uh, kind of hydraulic pistons there because I wanted the idea of this to have where this nose would sort of be able to pivot up or down for control purposes. Um, also the, uh, the foot pedals are on an assembly and you can see these uh, simple shapes in here just to create sort of a, a pivoting hydraulic assembly so that the pedals can move and uh, so they can move up and down this way and they can also twist this way to create um, more sort of like sci-fi tech, right? Like obviously none of this would work in the real world because it's like a grav bike and it's all sci-fi stuff. But in the world of 40K, it'll do what it needs to do. It looks cool. Um, again, back here we have more pre-made parts from uh, the Repulsor that have been resized and stretched and uh, sliced and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to put a link for the files that I used down below. I'm also going to put a link where you can get this file on Thingiverse because all of the stuff that I used is sort of like Creative Commons, no license, that sort of stuff. It's all out there for free for anybody to use. Um, I have created this on Thingiverse for everybody to use. And in the Thingiverse uh, page, 
I have a supported file that's like ready to print. I have a STL file that you can play with and support your own way if that's what you want to do. And I also have this 3MF file from the 3D Builder where everything is still unmerged. So all of these separate pieces are still, well, separate. And so if you want to take this and remix it to your own taste, you can do that too. Um, but yeah, I'll have the, uh, the two files that I use to get like this totally not a Space Marine and some of these totally not a repulsor parts uh, to create this. And um, I made sure that everything is within scale. That's something really important. And since this is all in millimeters, you can just click on things and um, make sure that your X, Y, and Z stuff is all correct within millimeters. Cause I wanted to make sure that if somebody wanted to use these, um, they would be playable on the table as a proxy for something else. So this is the proper base size for pretty much all bike models on the table right now, a 76 by 46 oval. And obviously in the uh, STL, this is not there because you don't wanna have this like floating object in the STL for when you wanna print. So this is just there for scale. And um, you know, I can easily just delete it so that it's not there or bring it back so that I can make sure that everything is within scale. Like super important when you're doing um, really any type of uh, scratch building, kit bashing, sculpting, whatever for the tabletop stuff, you wanna make sure that everything is within scale or else it'll look really wonky on the tabletop if like all of your guys um, are from one company that does 28 millimeter scale for a 28 millimeter game and your guy is sculpted in like 32 or even 40 or 54 um, and you try to put them on there, it's gonna look wildly out of place. So I try to keep everything within scale because um, that's, you know, I'm a stickler for that. I'm kind of a miniature snob, so <laughs> I want to make sure that everything looks right. Um, and this is also pretty cool. I did leave it open for lots of customization. There are no chapter symbols on this, so it can literally be anything. Um, I decided not to have shoulder pads, um, backpack, or a head because I think those are points of customization that people want to do. And of course, if you're also into 3D printing, you can 3D print your own backpacks and shoulder pads to your taste, or you can use plastic ones from various kits. Um, and I wanted to have no chapter symbols so that anybody could you know, make it whatever they want. And with this 3MF file on the uh, Thingiverse page, you can uh, open this up as the editable work in progress thing with all these different shapes. And I mean, you can make this like a chaos uh, styled bike if you wanted to. Um, I think the only thing that is, um, unmerged or that is, that is merged, excuse me, is, um, this, this whole front assembly right here, because I had to make that as a separate file and then import it into a new scene to, um, start working on all of this. And so really the only thing that is, you can't really get rid of is the, uh, Aquila up here that's been embossed, but if it's a chaos one, you can always just like print that out and, um, like sand that off not a big deal or you can like leave it there and like crack it or put like chips in it or you know something like that because like some chaos guys um still have the imperial eagle and they like defile it just so that they can have a big like f you to all the other space marines that see it you know that kind of thing um but yeah it's super easy to uh do a lot of editing in this program which is kind of why i like it it's like baby's first uh 3d modeling software even though you can't really do much other than create uh, just basic shapes like you know, here there's a cube you know you can resize it you can uh, turn it with pitch and yaw and roll um, move it around you can also do things like slice it different ways uh, to create different shapes the um, the type of shapes you can make in this is pretty limited um, with one exception being the Taurus or Taurus, however you want to do that. Um, this is actually pretty cool. Uh, I like using the Taurus for a lot of, um, it's a cube. Uh, I like using the Taurus for a lot of different sci-fi stuff. So it starts off with this shape. And then when you change the latitude and longitude of the, sh the, uh, the shape itself, it starts altering the the actual shape so now you can see we have um where it's sort of a a circle in 3d space but it's triangular now uh on the outside and triangular on the inside so it's like a uh it's only got four sides going around this way 
And when you have something like this, you can make lots of things like um, like import sockets and exhausts and gun barrels. And like if you if we import this into the model, we can or we can edit it now. And when you start doing reshaping, you can do all sorts of stuff. So if we bring it out this way, you know, it starts taking on this shape where it's more ovoid. You can do different things with that. And if we bring it back to kind of a circle shape, it's nice and smooth. So you can even like cut this in half uh, down the, uh, the center line here to create two different surfaces. Um, if we like stretch it up this way, then now we have like a connector for different mechanical objects. I actually use a shape very similar to this, lots of places on the bike itself. Um, and this is also like, you can make like a muzzle break on a gun, looks like this, right? You can, you can have a shape like this with maybe a little bit more side geometry going around this curve rather than just two flat faces and then put a cone on top and it creates a really nice like head of a missile, things like that. So, I mean, it's, when I say this is like a kit bash video, I'm really not exaggerating. Like this is basically all I did was I created very simple shapes and then uh, put those shapes together to create compound shapes which creates compound detail bits. Um, and if you look at some of the pieces that are pre-made on this, um, you can see that's like kind of the, the very, very basics of 3D modeling. So if we look at this like uh, storage box here on the side, um, that is all that is is a bunch of squares and rectangles merged into a single piece to create a complex shape. Um, and that's basically all I did. So these ammo pouches and saddlebags, those are just rounded off uh, cubes. You can create cubes with more round corners and edges in the custom uh, shape maker up here up top. And then I just put two of those together, slapped a rectangle in the middle, and boom, all you have an ammo pouch. Um, you can do all sorts of stuff, like these handlebars I made in there, um, the foot pedals, and these uh, hydraulic assemblies, and the body. Um, I made and that's pretty much it. I mean, like there's not a whole lot else you can do with this. Like you can't um, create a, uh, a void in things, which I, I find very annoying. Like there's another software that I use when I'm getting models ready to 3D print called Mesh Mixer that has the ability to do that with a Boolean difference where you can create a shape like a sphere and then you use that um, tool the boolean difference tool and it creates a void in the exact same shape as that and then you just copy that object into the other side and it creates a like a peg to go into a keyed hole of whatever shape that you're using so you can like slice stuff up and print it in multiple pieces um, but being able to create that void in uh, different things is also a tool i wish i had in this software to help with the kit bashing process that would have been nice um yeah, it gets the job done. Um, I really like using it so far. And then in the coming uh, weeks and months here pretty soon, I'm gonna start taking some courses to learn how to actually 3D sculpt using different uh, softwares. Like I said, like I haven't decided which software I wanna jump into first. Like some people have preferences this way or the other depending on their experience with those softwares in the past. So when I was taking some game design courses, like, you know, five, six years ago in, in college, uh, I barely dipped my toes into that with different projects. I've forgotten most of what I know on that. Um, I've used 3ds Max and Blender in the past, but that was all for very simple things to get stuff ready for 3D print. So I don't really know how to sculpt in a 3D space yet. And that's what I wanna learn how to do so that instead of using um, other people's work to kit bash models, I want to be able to make all my own stuff from scratch just to have that skill set. And so that's the that's the next big step for all this. But I wanted to show how to make this. Um, when you see this video, uh, like I said, the links for all the stuff that I use will be in the description. The Thingiverse URL will be in the description where you can get this model right here ready for 3D print and the editable file so you can kit bash and edit yourself to customize this however you want. Um, and uh, this coming weekend, sorry, I had a brain fart. This coming weekend, I will be painting one of these that I printed out um, live over on Twitch. And um, 
I will probably do a video or two over on YouTube on it as well because I really like this. I'm really proud of how it turned out. Um, it prints out great. It's a super, super cool model once you have it in your hands and I'm ready to throw paint on it. So um, if you want to see most of the painting process, make sure to tune on Twitch. If you want to see sort of a like showcase video of it all painted, then I'll be putting that up on YouTube after that process is over. And um, I think this is going to be sort of a semi-regular thing. Like this is just the first one that I've ever done. Um, and we're starting off the new year by painting it, which is really fun. And in the future, I'll probably do more of these. So I don't want to say it's going to be like a weekly thing or a bi-weekly thing, but it'll be semi-regular. This is not the only thing uh, like 3D kit bash or whatever that you're going to see. I'm going to be doing more of them in the future. So look forward to that and I'll catch you next time.